Kurt, good to see you. Good to see you, man. How are things going in Ontario today? Today is a beautiful day. Beautiful. <laughs> it's Friday. It's playing today. Enjoy the sunshine. Perfect. Uh, so, you know, this is our 30th anniversary for CSI. Yes. Um, well, I know that you're a, you are also an old timer with CSI. So, what, uh, when did you actually start with us? I started with CSI the fall of 99. That's when I moved up from the States where I was also selling cultured stone. Oh, that's right. I forgot you were doing that for down there before joining us. Um, and then when you came up, were you, did you basically, were you always in Ontario once you got to Canada? I started in Ontario, so the entire province, and then eventually took over looking after Quebec and the Maritimes. So everything except the Labrador, I covered it in the east. And at that time, it was literally Brian and I were the only sales reps in the country. <laughs> so, I mean, Ontario's pretty huge just in itself, and then all of a sudden you get Quebec and the Maritimes too. That's yeah. uh, that's quite a bit. Uh, what? Yeah. So, and, and, and what were you primarily focused on for the for the first little bit there? Mainly, mainly looking after the dealer network, beefing it up, uh, lots of training, lots of support, building a lot of displays, uh, seminars, that sort of thing. I mean, some of the most remote dealers hadn't seen sales rep in years. Yeah. The main focus, of course, was promoting culture stone, which at that time, that's that's all we sold was culture stone. And it wasn't like uh, you could do a lot of uh, internet advertising because that wasn't really much of a thing. So pretty much it was a, a lot of traveling, a lot of home shows, trade shows. Uh, back in those days, that's that's how you got in front of the public was going to shows. Yeah. So there was those initial years, I did at least two dozen shows every single year. So a lot of a lot of weekends spent standing in arenas. <laughs> Sore feet, sore ankles, sore lower back. And, and cool floors. I remember doing shows where they had just taken the ice up. <laughs> Stand on this freezing slab. But, you know, that's what you had to do back then. Ah, uh, well, thanks for the efforts for, you know, I'm sure that that's a, a big reason why we were where we are today. Uh, I can't believe you were on the road that much. I've heard you often called the ultimate road warrior. And I, uh, I just thought it's because you know t Ontario is so big, but no, literally you were, you were out there for, uh, for a long time and <laughs> away from home. Good. Lots of running around. There was a lot of years there where it was. I logged nearly a hundred thousand kilometers a year, and that was just in my own vehicle. And you know, I'd fly out to the Maritimes and rent a vehicle, always get a vehicle with unlimited mileage, because in two weeks I would put on seven, eight thousand oh. kilometers. I remember people saying, oh, how lucky you are to go out to the Maritimes for a couple of weeks. Well, sometimes those two weeks were in February, which isn't ideal. And on the other times, it was literally just racing from dealer to dealer because Maritimes is a big place. So yep. whatever I could see from my windshield from the highway, that's what I got to see. <laughs> but uh, a lot of kilometers, a lot of running around. And eventually, I mean, Culture Stone became so popular that we, we could hardly keep up with the demand and lead times got longer yeah i think when i not long after i started i think we had like i think southern ledgestone or something like that at like 27 weeks yeah I, that would have been great i could have lived with that we had product uh, especially the dry stack and profits um were 44 weeks so it's, it's kind of hard to uh budget your ordering when you had to wait 44 weeks wow product. that is absolutely crazy and somehow we got through it all. So, yeah, people kept ordering. Hmm. At least we uh, could cut back on some of the trade shows because, especially the big trade shows, we still did all the home shows, and that's what. Yeah. No, the big trade shows, it was kind of pointless being in them promoting a product that we couldn't keep up with, anyways. Yeah, all right. A few of them for my schedule. Yeah, and I guess that, you know, hopefully people became to came to know the brand a little bit more at that point in time and being at each and every one wasn't as important anymore. Um, I know you said earlier today you're at the warehouse, uh, at our warehouse now, and you know, I know now we've got like a nice big clean, clean warehouse and, and uh, um, you know, it's come a long way over the years, but back when you started, 
Were we were we with Webster and Sons then? Yeah, exactly. So we uh, basically leased the space from them, and which was fine in the beginning when we were smaller. But I mean, as we grew, they had no room for us, and they would just we would be piled up everywhere as deep as they could to the point where there was hardly any aisle. So when you needed a sample board, and if that sample board was way in the back, it would take them forever to move all the pallets. And oftentimes you end up just kind of crawling and wiggling your way to the box to get the sample boards that you needed. And then from there we moved to, you know, a two, two acre dirt lot with almost nowhere else. So from the humble beginnings. Yeah. Yeah, I remember being on a forklift and having to We'd have like six or seven product types in a row. And of course, the one that was needed was the last two boxes at the very bottom. Always the last. Dig it all up, put it all back. Man, <laughs> um, I mean, I know a ton has changed with Stone and Trends and we've got all these other brands now, but back then with just Culture Stone, uh, you know, like the linear look and all that is kind of what's hot today. What was, what was big when you first started? started it was all about split fix which today we don't even make anymore but I mean, back then we would sell that by the truckload i'd have dealers that would order entire truckloads of the split fix which is kind of a roundish old looking stone and what you would find around the great lakes and that's what everybody wanted they wanted really rustic so that dress field stones uh, even drift stone which was yes. beautiful stone we have made uh, which we don't make anymore either. But, uh, you know, the River Rocks, River Rock address field stone, even though we paired it back, we still make it today. But a lot of those early stones, they're just not around. It changes, looks yeah. change. Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny. I mean, you know, the, the more things change, there's a, a couple constants. I talked with Wendy a couple weeks ago about the anniversary, and you and I are still around. So, you know, stronger and better than ever. That's, that's right. <laughs> that's on right. the day. <laughs> okay, well, uh, good catching up with you. Thank you for your time. Yep, take care. We'll see, see you later. Bye.